welcome you all to VTU e Shikshana program. I, Rajeshwari RP, Assistant Professor, Department of CSE RYMSC. I, I was uh, handling uh, the previous module. Uh, we have been uh, together uh, discussing uh, module 3 and module 4. Uh, now, we shall discuss about the module 5. Uh, so, previously in the module 3, we have been discussing about the input output organization and all the concepts related to input output organization we have studied. In the module 4, we have studied all about the interrupts, we have seen a part of memory ma system, uh, the direct bus arbitration techniques, the uh, direct memory access uh, and the, all the other concepts related to the memory. Uh, to moving to the last module of this particular subject. Uh, so, this particular uh, module consists of the basic processing unit. So, this basic processing unit, so what all uh, I would like to highlight the topics what we would like to cover. So, here so the basic processing unit consists of uh, uh, the following topics, some fundamental concepts related to basic uh, 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 some fundamental concepts related to the basic processing unit, register transfers performing the ALU operation, uh, how to fetch a word from the memory, control sequence, uh, detailed control sequence uh, of operations, uh, how a word can be stored in memory, execution of a complete instruction along with the execution of a complete branch instruction and uh, unconditional branch instructions. So, these are the contents that we are required to study under the basic processing unit. And apart from that, we are having the second part of module 5 is the pipelining concepts. So, here we are required to study the basic concepts of pipelining, what is the need for pipelining, the role of caches in the pipelining and uh, how the pipeline performance is going to increase. Uh, how it is going to add up to the CPU performance. So, this uh, all these concepts uh, we are required to study under the module 4, okay, uh, sorry module 5. So, coming to the first part of the module uh, 5. So, first we shall start with the basic processing unit. So, all of you know that what is the basic processing unit. So, it is generally uh, we refer to the CPU as the uh, processing unit. Okay. So, in general, so these are the fundamental concepts. So, first is the instruction set processor. So, what do you mean by the instruction set processor? So, this particularly the processor, uh, this instruction set processor typically tries to execute uh, uh, the instructions by fetching the uh, each instruction one at a time from the main memory. So, this we call it as fundamentally as the instruction set processor. Over a period of time, because uh, the, this particular uh, instruction set processor was uh, being uh, modified and it was known as the central processing unit. Okay, so, because there were more processors being um, uh, added, so this particular central, the word central uh, was uh, being replaced with just this uh, processing unit, because more cores, uh, core processors were added uh, to the uh, processor, so the name was being modified. So, if you take any, the role of this uh, uh, processing unit is basically to execute a sequence of steps. Uh, typically, computing task consists of a series of steps specifically <coughs> specified by a sequence of machine instructions that constitute the program. So, basically the program, the any processor it is going to execute a program by taking, by fetching the instructions uh, one at a time from the main memory and uh, sequentially it is going to execute the instructions one by one by fetching the contents from the main memory. Right, an instruction is basically it is defined as uh, instruction is executed by carrying out a sequence of more rudimentary operations. So, rudimentary operations are nothing but the uh, instructions are executed in most of its uh, basic uh, steps. So, so, that is the reason it is called as the rudimentary operations. Right. So, the processor uh, uh, continuing with the fundamental concepts of the basic processing unit. So, this processor fetches one instruction at a time and performs the operations specified and performs the operations specified. 
the instructions are fetched from the successive memory locations and uh, until a branch or a jump instruction is been encountered. So, therefore, now what happens? We are going to successively uh, load the instructions. The instructions are fetched from successive memory locations and uh, uh, until a branch instruction is being encountered. Okay. So, because the program counter is the one which keeps track of the successive uh, address of next instruction to be executed, see the uh, sequentially the program counter is being uh, incremented and when only when a branch instruction is encountered, the PC will be loaded with a new value. So, that is the reason the processor fetches one instruction at a time and perform the operation specified and instructions are fetched from successive memory locations sequentially until a branch or a jump instruction has been encountered. The processor keeps track of the address of memory location to be executed next in a register called as the program counter. Okay. So, already we have seen the different types of uh, registers uh, and uh, the um, uh, like instruction register, the role of a uh, um, MAR, MDR, the different registers we have seen in the interconnection process uh, while we were discussing the module 3, right. So, this uh, program counter, just a quick review of that, the different registers which help in the process of uh, execution of an instruction is the program counter. Program counter is one of the important uh, what we call register which, uh, which keeps the address of the next instruction uh, to be executed. Okay. So, PC automatically the, if uh, the memory is said to be byte addressable, PC value is incremented by 4. Okay. So, that is the uh, role played by the program counter. So, program counter keeps track of the address of memory location containing the next instruction to be fetched using the program counter. So, next form of register is called as the instruction register. So, this is another very important register uh, which holds the next instruction, the current instruction to be executed. So, whatever the instruction that is specific that uh, the instruction register is holded is holding the control, uh, um, the uh, controller and the decoder logic will try to analyze the contents of the instruction register and try to take the action accordingly. So, this is the role played by the instruction register, I repeat. So, this instruction register is holding the address, uh, uh, it is holding the current instruction that needs to be executed. Okay. So, now uh, executing an instruction typically consists of uh, two, fa uh, two phases. So, it is called as a fetch phase followed by a de uh, execution phase. Okay. So, there can be more than one uh, fetch phases if there is more number of words to be fetched in an instruction. Okay. So, typically an executing an instruction consists of the following steps executing an instruction first the fetch the contents of the memory location pointed by the PC. What is PC? Program counter the whose role is to keep track of address of the next instruction to be executed. PC will be always hold, holding the address of the next instruction to be executed. Okay, so, this uh, fetch the contents of the memory location which is indicated by our program counter. So, the contents of this location, so whatever the uh, value pointed by this, okay, the information from this location will be loaded into the register, I, into the instruction register, into the instruction register. Okay. Uh, to continue with, executing an instruction contains the following steps. So, this the fetch the first step is nothing but uh, the contents that is indicated by the program counter, whatever the, the address indicated okay, by the uh, PC will be holding the address. Okay, when we put it in the bracket, so whatever the content at that address indicated by our program counter, uh, that will be loaded into the instruction register. So, instruction register will now hold the information or the content indicated by the PC. Okay. So, whatever the content it is indicated at a memory location uh, defined by our PC, so that information will be loaded into our IR. So, this instruction register now holds the current instruction to be executed, it holds the current uh, instruction to be executed. Okay. 
So, <clears throat> after loading the contents, the contents of the uh, program counter needs to be updated, okay, because the, it is always keeping track of the next instruction to be executed. So, therefore, assuming that the memory is said to be byte addressable. So, whenever we say or the memory is said to be byte addressable, we are required to increment the program counter by 4. Okay. So, that means the memory address, the current memory address location is 1000. So, next address location will be 1004. So, therefore, if our program counter currently, if it is holding 1000, we have to add 4 to it to, uh, to make the PC point to the next uh, location. right? So, therefore, PC plus 4. So, this particular program counter plus 4, we are going to update, right? Uh, update the address uh, so that uh, and uh, make the program counter to fetch the next uh, uh, instruction. Assuming that the memory is byte addressable, increment the contents of PC by 4. Okay. So, this 2, the step 1 and step 2, it is called as the fetch phase, fetch phase. So, next uh, carry out the action specified by the instructions in the by the instruction in the uh, instruction register. The next step in the execution of an instruction is uh, carry out the actions, whatever the actions that are uh, defined in the instruction register, it is uh, our decoder uh, circuit, it is going to uh, analyze the uh, contents of the instruction register and accordingly the action will be initiated by the control circuitry and necessary signals will be, control signals will be generated to initiate that action. Right? So, carry out the action specified by the instruction in the instruction uh, register. So, these are the two, uh, uh, two uh, three steps that needs to be followed for executing an instruction. If our instruction contains one word, there will be one fetch phase followed by the execution phase. If our uh, instruction occupies more than one word, there will be multiple fetch phases followed by an execution phase. Okay. So, next, so this represents the typical architecture, a single bus architecture. So, this is a very important uh, uh, concept. So, single bus organization of the data path inside a processor. So, there are single bus architecture, multiple bus architecture, but for your syllabus, we are limiting to the single bus architecture. Okay. So, why it is called as a single bus uh, organization? single bus organization of the data path. So, because there is only one single bus, so this is what you can see this big arrow. So, this is called as the internal processor bus, right. So, now uh, th uh, this particular, this is called as the internal processor bus. All the components are connected to the internal processor bus to form a single bus architecture, okay. So, now you can see here clearly PC. So, this is our program counter, memory address register, memory data register, multiplexer, uh, arithmetic and the logic unit, some temporary registers called as Z, Y and Z. Okay. So, and this is our instruction decoder and the control uh, logic and this is our instruction register IR, some general purpose registers R0 to RN minus 1 and this is again a temporary register to hold certain intermediate results. Okay. So, now what happens uh, uh, coming to this particular point? So, what is the program counter? As we know that the program counter, it is holding the address of the next instruction uh, to be executed. So, this program counter has uh, both, it receives the data, uh, it is having, uh, okay. so the data from the program counter can be loaded onto the uh, on to the processor bus as well as the data from the uh, this from the processor bus can be given as the input to the uh, pc so therefore you can see the arrow is said to be doubly double ended okay so that means pc can receive the data from um, and also it can load the data on to the bus okay so now we are having the memory bus so this particular memory bus contains the address lines and the data lines. The memory bus, which is the external bus apart from the uh, internal data bus, internal processor bus, which is there within the processor, we are having the external bus. This is called as the external memory bus. 
Okay, so the the memory bus, the address lines and the data lines of this external memory bus is connected to the internal processor via what we call the MAR and MDR. So, this is called as the memory address register and this is called as the memory data register. So, we can see now clearly this MAR receives the input from the internal processor bus and it is going to give the output to the external processor bus. So, therefore, the arrow mark is in this particular direction. So, whereas the MDR it receives the input, uh, it is going to receive the input from uh, it is going to receive the input from uh, the particular uh, uh, the MDR it is going to receive the input from the processor bus as well as from the external memory bus. Okay. So, therefore, the data lines here it is going to receive the data from the external memory bus as well as from the internal processor bus. So, therefore, the it is having two inputs and two outputs here you can see. Okay. So, this is what the MDR the role of the MDR. So, you know that the MDR holds the data information, the it is basically containing the data that is to be transmitted from, uh, uh, from uh, one point to another on the over the bus. So, MAR usually holds the address, addressing information is hold in the is kept in the MAR and in the MDR it is uh, holding the data to be routed to a particular destination. Okay. <coughs> So, now we are having the ALU. So, now this particular ALU it is having one of the input from the internal processor bus which is nothing but the input B and input A it is from the output of the MUX what you can see here. So, the MUX it is this particular MUX is used to select uh, two input multiplexer it is being used. So, one is the constant 4 and another one is the Y input. right? So, why we are going to use this particular constant for whenever we want to update the contents of program counter PC value when it has to be added for. So, this constant 4 is selected as an input to the MUX. So, in case if we this is not used the uh, another input that is uh, the MUX will select the input Y to the MUX. Right? So, therefore, the MUX we can either select the constant 4 or the Y depending upon the situation. So, here we are having the ALU control lines uh, which are going to provide the uh, various uh, controls for various operations. The output of the ALU is stored in some temporary register called as the Z. Okay. So, Z uh, uh, this Y, Z and temp are the temporary registers which are used as the output registers uh, uh, some spe for some special purpose. Okay. So, here we are having the instruction decoder and the control logic. The instruction decoder and the control logic, the uh, this particular memory bus, the control lines of this memory bus is connected to the instruction decoder and the control logic. So, what does this control logic try to do? With this control logic, this instruction decoder and the control logic receives the input from the instruction register by analyzing and decoding the contents of the instruction register, these uh, control this uh, unit tries to generate the necessary control signals uh, and they try to initiate uh, uh, generate the control signals to and give them to the processor so that a necessary action can be initiated. Right? And these are all the general purpose registers are not to R n minus 1, they can be 16 general purpose register 32 or so on depending upon the type of architecture. Okay. So, another as we mentioned already, this is another output uh, variable with no special significance. So, Y, Z and uh, temp are, are the registers which can be used to hold some uh, uh, temporary results. Okay. So, this is what we call the, the single bus organization of the data path inside a processor. So, what do you mean by the data path? The path that is connecting all the inter, the ALU with uh, the uh, MAR, MDR and other components. So, this forms what we call the data path. Okay. So, this particular um, 
uh, figure. So, internal organization of the processor, what all we explained, it is now just uh, uh, listed in the form of a points, ALU and registers are used for the temporary storage, various digital circuits for executing micro operations. We use the code, a uh, MUX decoders and the counters. So, internal path for movement of data between the ALU and the registers. So, this is called as the data path. Apart from that, there are the driver circuits for transmitting the signals to external units, receiver uh, circuits for incoming signals uh, from the external units. So, this is all the uh, particular um, um, summary of uh, the a single uh, single data path, single bus organization, uh, which is connected to the internal processor architecture. Okay. So next, uh, we know that during the execution of an any operation, uh, the lot of data transfers are uh, going to take place between the registers. The data movement or the data transfer is going to happen between the registers. Right. So, therefore, the uh, any data uh, uh, transfer, if we are going to consider, the each data transfer is controlled by two control signals. It is going to be in, uh, implemented by using two control signals. Right. So, transfer the contents of, for example, here, uh, we are having transfer the contents of register R1 to R4. So, we are having some particular <coughs> Uh, register the movement of data between two registers called as the R1 to R4. Okay. So, before this one, <coughs> so now we are required to know, study about this uh, particular figure, examine how the input on this figure is going to, it is called as the input and output gating for the registers. Okay. So, this particular figure clearly shows how the particular data transfer needs to be initiated between the two registers. Now, for example, we are going to consider two registers R1 and R3 or R4, whatever it is. So, basically, the input and the, the flow of information in and out of the register is controlled by the switches here. Okay, so, it is being controlled by the switches as sh uh, shown in the particular figure. Right? So, this particular figure you can see here R i. So, this particular R i. So, now if we want to load the data from the internal processor bus into the register. So, this R in R 1, this is R 1 register is R 1. If we want to load the data from the processor bus into the register, so it is connected via the switch X here. So, this we have to uh, enable this particular switch here in order to load the data from the uh, bus, from the uh, processor bus into the register. So, similarly, if we want to load the data from the register into onto the bus, so then this particular out latch, so out switch should be enabled, right. So, this is the way because whenever we want to load the data into the registers, we are required to uh, just control the input and output into the register using the control switches here uh, called as R in and R out. Okay. So, as you can see here in the figure, right. So, in this particular figure R 1, if we want to give an input into the R 1 from the data path, it has to this bit should be enabled, uh, uh, this R in should be set to 1. Okay. So, similarly, if we want to output the contents of the register onto the data bus, R1 out should be set to uh, R1 out should be set to 1. So similarly, here we are having uh, this particular entire uh, uh, figure shows uh, the particular input and output gating for the registers. So this is called as a register transfer. The figure illustrates uh, how the data um, uh, movement takes place between the registers. Okay. I repeat, whenever the data has to be loaded from the processor bus into the register, the R1 in, okay, so this should be enabled, 
okay, which is the input from uh, this uh, data path into the register. Similarly, to output the value from the register to the on to the bus to load the data. So, we require here we require we uh, require uh, this particular output R1 out to be uh, set to 1. So, this places the contents of register R1 onto the bus. So, similarly you can see here if you want to give the input to, to this particular uh, y, uh, y register. So, this y in should be enabled to 1. So, which is controlled via the switch. Right. So, this one of the input is being given as a max already we explained this one in the previous uh, thing. So, in this ALU it is having two inputs input A and input B. So, input A uh, input B it is directly receiving from the processor bus and uh, input the in ALU receives the input A from the max as output of max. So, this max is uh, having uh, the capability to select either the constant 4 or the value y. Okay, it is using the select signal. So, it is going depending if you want to implement the PC, uh, update the PC value. So, then this constant 4 will be selected by the MUX and PC is equal to PC plus 4 will be implemented uh, in this particular add operation it will be taking place in the ALU. In case other operations are there, the MUX will select the input y. So, now after the uh, resultant operation, the uh, particular the output because you want to input uh, the content from the ALU into the z, okay, z is a temporary register to hold the output results. So, therefore, we require the content of ALU into the uh, z. So, we require x value here z in, z in is nothing but we are required because it is a input, input to the x register. So, this should be enabled via the switch. Okay. And similarly, this output if we want to transfer the output from the z register on to the processor bus. So, we have to enable the z out, uh, z out okay, uh, via the switch, this should be set to 1. The process is very simple whenever the input, whenever the we require to give the input from the processor bus into the register, the respective uh, register R in of that register should be set to 1. So, in case if we want to output uh, the content of the register onto the data onto the processor bus, uh, then uh, R out of that particular register should be enabled to 1. So, this is called as the gating, input output gating for the registers. Okay. So, here the for example, uh, example uh, transfer the contents of register R1 to R4. Okay. So, how this particular process is, uh, what is the sequence of steps that are needed to initiate this data transfer, transfer the contents of register R1 to R4. So, enable the output of register R1 by setting R1 out to a 1. Okay. So, because what we are trying to do here, uh, you are trying to, okay. so here you are uh, right R1 contents has to be output, uh, R1 contents have to be uh, transmitted into the register R4. right? So, in order to transfer the contents of R1 to R4, so, now enable the, because this is acting as a output. So, you have to enable the out of this R1 out is equal to 1. You have to set the R1 out is equal to 1. Okay. So, R1 out is equal to 1. Okay. Enable the output of register R1 by setting R1 out to 1. So, when we do this, the contents of R1 is being placed will be placed, this places the contents of R1 onto the processor bus. From the processor bus, we are, uh, it is, uh, have to be inputted into the register R4, because R4 is the input now. So, we have to set this R, R4 in is equal to 1. So, enable the input of R4 by setting R4 into 1, right. So, this loads the data from the processor into the register R4. So, this is the uh, sequence of steps that are needed to execute uh, what you call the de uh, register transfers in terms of uh, R in and uh, R out signals.
Right. So, now <coughs> to perform next to, to continue, we are required to uh, another very important task here is that we are required to write the control sequence, examine the total control se uh, sequence for any operation because we are uh, looking at the basic steps of how the instructions are getting executed uh, within the basic processing unit. So, we are required to generate the control sequence for any uh, program, for any operation um, or instruction that gets executed, right. So, this under the topic performing uh, arithmetic or the logical operations. Uh, the ALU is a combinational circuit that has no internal storage. So, whatever the it is having no, as you have seen in the figure, there is no storage within the ALU. So, immediately it pro, uh, after executing or uh, implementing that particular um, instruction, executing that particular instruction, the resultants will be stored uh, back into some temporary registers. Immediately, it will be transferred either into the Z register or some other register. Okay. So, the ALU is a combinational circuit uh, that has no internal storage. ALU gets the two operands from the MUX and the bus. The result is temporarily stored in the register Z. Okay. So, what is this particular as uh, explained in this particular figure already? Uh, so, this particular uh, ALU. So, ALU, it is not having any temporary storage. It, within the ALU, there is nothing uh, that is uh, uh, there to store the result. So, immediately it is going to store the resultant into the Z, okay, into the uh, register Z and ALU gets its input from A and B. Okay. Uh, one of the input is from the data from the processor bus directly and another input is from the MUX. So, that is what it has been uh, explained, right. So, this particular ALU gets the two operands from the MUX and the bus, the resultant is temporarily stored in the register Z. So, what is the sequence of operations that required to add the contents of register R1 to those of register R2 and store the result in R3. So, now what is the sequence of operations to add the contents of register R1 to those of R2 and store the result in R3. So, this whatever the steps we write in this particular format, it is called as a control sequence, control sequence for executing a single instruction. Okay. So, uh, this uh, steps are important for understanding the uh, uh, any of the uh, basic operation. Okay. So, what is the now as an example? So, what is this particular example trying to, uh, what is the instruction that is getting executed means? So, you are having the register R3. Okay. So, uh, a register R3, first what you have to do? You have to add the contents of R1 plus R2, okay. whatever the contents of R1 is there, you have to add the contents of R1 to R2 and store the resultant into the R3 and store the resultant into the R3. So, now you have to clearly observe what uh, this, uh, what is the, sequ in order to implement this sequence, in order to implement this particular instruction, okay. so these, these are the control sequence that needs to be generated. Okay. So, first what you are going to do R1 out, okay, R1 out. So, you are going to take the data from this particular register R1. Okay. So, R1 out comma Y in. So, what is that you are trying to uh, take this particular data from the register R1 and you are going to put it into store it in Y in. Okay. So, you are going to store the data, uh, move the data from R1 into Y in. So, that is R1 out comma Y in. What is R2 out? You are taking another variable, this one R2 out. You are outputting. That means, you want to take the contents of R2 and you are going to provide as an input to the particular thing. Okay. So, why you have taken R2 out? and uh, select y uh, comma add comma z in what happens in this particular sequence is that 
see in this particular sequence R1 out comma Y in. So, what happens? I repeat the steps in the first you are going to transferring R1 contents into R1 into Y in because you are going to provide the input to the ALU, you are going to provide the input to the ALU via Y, okay. Y is one of the input and another one is through B, okay. So, that B is nothing but our R2 out, okay. So, input to the ALU is this particular select is this y, y, okay. Apart from y, you are having another input called as a R2 out. So, R2 out is nothing but our B, right. So, when we R2 out means this content will be loaded onto the data path and from the data path, from the data processor, it goes into the ALU via this, uh, uh, this particular B, right. And now, select B, select B means uh, select Y sorry select y the alu will select this particular operand this is one operand and this is second operand and a control signal called as the add is used here control signal add is used to uh, implement uh, uh, perform the add operation and the contents from the alu the contents from the alu is transferred into the z register right so therefore after this one you are having the z in okay so, from the Z register, you want to transfer, uh, you want to move the resultant into the R3 because finally, you want to store the content into R3. So, from you are moving the contents from Z, that means Z out, okay, Z out comma R3 in, right. So, this is the control sequence that is uh, required to implement the particular operation. Uh, what is that particular operation? Adding the contents of R1 plus R2 and moving the resultant back to uh, into R3. I repeat this particular sequence of steps, okay. Right. So, this particular sequence of steps uh, here, sequence of steps that are required here, R1 out comma Y in, I told you why you are required to use this R1 out comma Y in. Uh, and uh, R2 out select by R1 out comma Y in because uh, for the ALU you are required to supply one of the input to, to the register Y uh, through Y input. So, therefore, contents of R1 uh, is uh, given as an input into the uh, Y in, okay. So, then R2, R2 means the content of uh, another register will be put up on the data bus and from there it will be, uh, it is acting as one of the operand that is operand B, okay. From the data path, the content from the register R2 will go to the uh, data bus and from there it enters into the ALU. So, then what happens? This is one first, uh, sec first operand, second operand and then the add operation is implemented. The resultant will be stored in the Z register called as the Z in, okay and from you are inputting into the Z that means it should be controlled by a control signal Z in. So, the output from the Z in can be derived whenever the output Z out is set to 1. So, therefore, Z out when it is set to 1, it will be loaded into the register R3 because you, the resultant you have to store it in register R3, right. So, therefore, R3 in. So, this is the control sequence for generating, uh, for implementing the uh, uh, instruction R1 plus R2 into R3, right. So, practice this particular uh, control sequence. So, this is uh, the control sequence for execution of a complete instruction that is the frequently asked question, okay. <coughs>